Let's review the DJI Air 2S. Now I'm not gonna get into the technical specs of the actual drone. I don't really wanna give you that information. You can go and read that on DJI's website if you need those specs. But what I am going to get into are the features that I've used, that I use on a daily basis, and what I think of the drone, what I like about it, what I don't like about it, and my experience with it. So let's go ahead and get started. The first thing I want to talk about is Active Track. Active Track was one of the most attractive reasons for me to get the Air 2S versus getting the Mini. Uh, I do have the Mini and I have experienced it, but I really wanted to spend the money and put it into something that had one of the biggest features I was looking for, which was Active Track. The reason I needed Active Track was because I wanted the drone to be able to follow me while I was either running or driving or really doing any other activity like working out. And I wanted it to be able to follow along with me and just be able to track me. I, th I thought it would be great dynamic shots for my content and for anything that I was creating for other people as well. So it was one of the biggest attractions. However, I won't say that through my experience that it exceeded my expectations, but I won't say it disappointed either. It kind of fell between the two um, and met in the middle. So really the drone does a great job active tracking when uh, it's far away from the subject. So say I was driving down a road in the middle of nowhere and the drone was in the air and it was, tra it was tracking me. It did a fantastic job of tracking me doing that. Uh, it, it's because the you know drone's far enough away for the subject to not be moving too fast uh, and, and it's able to track me properly. Now, however, this changes when it's just me filming myself running and the drone is closer up. Now, if I'm the subject and I'm running and the drone is in front of me and it's following you know backwards along the path, it will lose me if I run too fast. Uh, and what can I say? I might ju I'm just too fast for the drone. My name is Barry Allen, and I am the fastest man alive. All jokes aside, I do. The drone does tend to lose me sometimes when I'm running, or if the subject is close. And so, what the drone will end up doing is just hovering where it lost me. It doesn't have a subject to track anymore. It lost where I was, and what it what it does is just stops. Now this can be a problem in a bad situation. So say the drone is low to the ground and it just loses track of me while I'm running and it's over the road. If a car doesn't see the drone, bye bye drone. Um, and that can be a huge issue because you just lost $1,300 there. Uh, so that has been a slight disappointment, uh, but it hasn't, it, it hasn't been a complete disappointment because it does end up tracking me really well when it can keep me in frame. So I really have to adjust my speed of running or my speed of moving around the drone that, so that it can keep track of me the entire time. This takes a lot of practice. It takes a lot of um, making sure that you aren't moving too fast and that you're going the right speed. So. That in itself is not a huge issue, but I wish the active track could be better. It's just, it's just natural that it's not gonna be perfect. How would I rate the active track? I would rate it about a seven out of 10. It does a great job most of the time, but there are times where I wish it could do better. All right, so the next thing I wanna talk about is Master Shots. I actually didn't know what Master Shots was in DJI's drones up until just a few weeks ago. And it's because I've never had the capacity around me to try it out. I Actually, that's a lie. I've had the capacity, I just wasn't ballsy enough to try it. Um, so recently, I went to a track and I tried it out. And basically what I found out was that it's a sequence of 10 different uh, dynamic shots that the drone will perform 
while tracking a specific subject or tracking a specific location. So you can draw a square around wherever, whatever you want to track and it'll basically do 10 dynamic movements and film it while keeping its eyes on that specific subject. And it does a wonderful job. I mean, I was blown away at the capabilities of this drone when it came to the master shots. Uh, it, they're very cinematic shots. They're very good looking shots. It does a fantastic job of zooming in, zooming out, which I didn't even know it could do. And it really, it honestly blew my mind. Um, and here is an example. So enjoy me just standing around doing weird things in the middle of a football field and look at what Master Shots is. So now that you have a better idea of what the Master Shots is, honestly, I, rec I highly recommend using Master Shots if you're ever traveling or doing something uh, like working out or filming a car or whatever the case may be. If you have a nice background and you want some dynamic shots, I mean, this will this will really do a fantastic job. And I think, I think it's worth it. Uh, so I rate the Master Shots a 10 out of 10. And one of the best things that you can do with Master Shots is actually uh, prioritize safety over the shot itself or vice versa. So if you have plenty of room and you don't really have anything the drone will crash into, then you don't need to prioritize safety and you can prioritize the shot. So that what the drone will do is make sure that it's gonna get the best shots for you and not have to you know, go around obstacles. But if you do have obstacles around you and you think that the drone might crash into them, then you can prioritize safety and it'll use the safety features using the sensors and it'll make sure that it doesn't crash into anything while getting these fantastic shots for you so that you don't lose your drone and it doesn't, you know, tank you $1,300. Um, so yeah, I think Master Shots is great. I think it's a fantastic feature that DJI has in a lot of its drones. And uh, it's one of the biggest things that I like about this drone. Have I crashed this drone? Of course I have. Um, who hasn't crashed a drone that has operated for the first time uh, or even multiple times? I, I think every single drone operator has crashed a drone at least once. And that comes with the territory because it's, it's something new that you're trying. So why did I crash my drone and when did it happen and how were the sensors involved in that? So I was actually working out. Uh, I was using a sledgehammer on a big tire. I wanted to get a good dynamic shot of it. And the drone was, I, I got the drone to circle around me while tracking just me. Um, so it was just circling and using, I was using that feature. Now the problem is that when you do use that feature, 
the sensors turn off and I didn't know this. So when I was using the circling feature, the sensors turned off and it started to rotate around me and it hit a tree. Luckily, the drone was not more than about six feet off the ground, uh, which still scared the hell out of me, but it hit a tree, it fell, and it survived. It wasn't a big disaster, and I did not lose a drone. Um, but that is one thing to definitely know is that when the drone is in an automatic feature, sometimes on some of the features, the sensors do turn off and they're not active. So you have to make sure that you go into the settings and learn when the sensors are on and when the sensors are off. However, DJI still has a great sensor, like it's a great build. The sensors are incredible and it does a fantastic job of when they are active. So during master shots, like I said before, they do have a prioritization when it comes to safety and you can turn that on versus having the prioritizing or the prioritization on the shot itself. So it will actually avoid all obstacles. It also has a great sensor when it comes to active track. Um, so you can actually have the active track on. So if I'm running or if I'm driving or whatever it is, and the drone is following along with you in the parallel mode, then it will still have the sensors on and it'll avoid obstacles like you've never seen before. Uh, I was very, very delighted to see that. And it was a huge, it really exceeded my expectations, to be honest, when it came to the sensors. Um, and even when you're manually drive or manually flying, not driving, uh, manually flying the drone, um, it has great sensing capabilities. It'll show you how you know far below or how far behind or above you something is or even in front of you. And it'll start beeping, it'll start making noises, and it'll make sure that you know that there is something there and that you need to be careful. Now, another thing is that the sensors will actually activate the drone safety features of not hitting something. So much like a one of the newer cars that you'll see where it has emergency braking, if the drone isn't going fast enough and you are, and it has time for it to stop, it will stop. So if I'm slowly approaching a building for a shot and I'm getting way too close, first it'll start beeping and tell me that it's getting that I'm getting too close to the building. Then it'll start slowing down. And finally it'll just stop. It won't let me hit the building, which is a huge feature for me. Uh, because I do, when I'm filming real estate stuff or I'm filming a city shot or whatever it is, and I want to get up close to a building, this is a huge help. And I don't want to crash my drone, especially when I'm like, you know, 150 meters in the air filming a tall building. I don't want the drone to come and come down and fall on someone. And then I get sued and, you know, go to jail <laughs> for potentially killing someone with a drone. Uh, so I definitely, uh, highly recommend getting this drone if you're looking for one with great sensing capabilities and great safety features. Uh, the sensors on this drone are fantastic. Like I said, there are always improvements that can be made, but um, I personally love the sensors on this drone and they do help out a lot in different situations. So yeah, I, I rate the sensors, I think an eight or nine out of 10. No fly zooms. Uh, following the rules of the sky is actually made pretty easy with the DJI operating system. Um, it actually has a great feature in, built into the drone that won't allow you to, one, fly in no-fly zones. So if I'm too close to an airport, it just won't let me take off. It, it will stay on the ground. It won't even go up a foot off the ground. Um, it literally will just tell me, hey, you can't fly here. It also shows you where there is um, there are like limited flying zones or it's a green zone and you can fly however you want. They will literally tell you everything within the actual operating system of the drone. Now, when it comes to no, like restrictions and how far up it can go and stuff like that, uh, it normally go lets me go ab about 150 meters into the sky. Um, if there is a limit in that area, 
it'll still allow me to go out of bounds of that limit, but it, it depends on where I am and how restrictive it is around that area. So if there's a very strict rule that you can't go above a certain height in that area, it just won't let you. But if it's flexible and it's just like, hey, be cautionary, then it'll give you the warning, make sure that you can, like you know what you're doing and then it'll let you keep going higher than that. Um, it'll also give you different warnings, uh, waivers, and make sure that you're following the rules. You'll have actual uh, waivers pop up on the screen that you'll have to, you know, check mark on the box, sign or whatever, and then press I agree to the, all the terms and say, okay, let me fly. That will happen. So in the no fly zones or in restricted zones or limited zones, make sure that you know what you're doing, make sure you're following the rules and not just flying willy nilly and being dangerous over you know crowds of people or cars or whatever. Make sure you're not trying to hurt anyone. Now, other than that, um, I have had certain issues with um, you know, flying in a no fly zone. So when there's a, not a, actually a no fly zone, uh, but I would, okay, the example is I was in Washington and I was way too north. Uh, I was at the most northern tip of Washington uh, possible and I wanted to fly my drone, but my phone thought that I was in Canada for some reason. So I was getting Canadian signal on my phone and unfortunately, for some reason, the drone just would not fly. It wasn't a no-fly zone. It wasn't a uh, you know area where I couldn't fly the drone, and it just wouldn't fly because I, for some reason, had Canadian signal, and it didn't want to let me go up in the sky. So that was one of the reasons. I, it might have just been because I didn't have proper phone signal, and it didn't it it didn't want me to lose the drone or whatever so i kind of appreciate it at the same time just in case the drone did leave you know my sight and i couldn't retrieve it now another thing about the drone is uh when you are in a not a restricted area but a limited zone or if there are limited zones around you so if there are limited or restriction re restricted zones around your area or where you're flying what it'll do is show you on the gps within the operating system of where those areas are and it'll tell you that you cannot fly there and so i was in la i was at venice beach and at the i was at the skate park and it didn't want to let me fly over the skate park because of some reason i don't know why but basically i wanted to fly over I, I wanted to see if i can push the limits and i tried to go past the uh restricted zone or the limited zone and it was a yellow map inside of the gps and it basically let me take the drone all the way to the edge of that zone and then much like Grand Theft Auto, if you play the games or any other video game where you get to the end of a map or the edge of a map, and what it'll do is just hit that edge and then it'll start going to the side or it'll push you back or whatever. So the drone ended up just pushing me to the side when I tried to even go further than that. It would just slow down and then start pushing me to the side away from that zone. So that does happen. It does very strictly keep you out of those zones if there are restricted zones out there. So you're never gonna be breaking the rules or breaking any kind of boundaries, uh, which I definitely like within the operating system. Ah, the battery. The battery is a funny thing when it comes to the DJI drones. So the D DJI claims that you get 30 minutes of flight time from the drone on each charge of the battery. Uh, with the Air 2S. So this is true. You do get 30 minutes, but there's a caveat. Uh, the problem comes in when you start getting to the low battery, uh, you know, low battery areas, like 30%, 20% and lower than that. Um, so for example, I was again in Washington. We were at Rialto Beach this time, and I want we we were lazy. We were tired from walking on another beach all day, and we wanted to see how far our walk would be uh, to the specific location that we wanted to go to at Rialto Beach. So I was like, you know what? Instead of walking all the way there and being disappointed, let's just be smart and fly the drone up. I can get some shots, and we'll see if. Um, 
you know, it's actually worth going all the way over there. So as soon as I pulled the drone out, connected it and everything, I saw that the drone was at 20%. I was like, I'm just flying it up. I'm not really recording. I'll just, I just won't record. I'll let the drone go over there and come back. Let me see if it's worth going over there. So I took the drone up all the way, went all the way to the location where I needed to be, which was about a mile away. And then I was like, okay, I'll start heading back. Uh, it gave me, on the way back, it gave me a low power warning saying that, hey, you need to head back uh, or in 10 seconds, we'll automatically head back to where you are. And I was like, okay, great. Um, I don't need it to come back automatically. I'll do it myself. So I still just kept coming back to me. Uh, and for some reason, the battery just tanked to 8% after that. Um, meaning the drone started giving me more warnings. And this time it wasn't a, hey, I'm automatically landing, or sorry, I'm, I'm gonna come towards you automatically or whatever. No, no, it was an automatic landing. And it was like, hey, you don't have a choice anymore. I'm landing, come get me. So unfortunately we were at a beach, meaning there is water <laughs> on the coast. And I had, all I could do, I couldn't take the drone up. I couldn't take it down. I literally, all I could do is move it left and right. So I moved it as much left as possible away from the water that I could. And it just automatically landed. I panicked, I ran and got the drone. Luckily it didn't get swept away by the ocean and uh, it was fine. But in dire cases like that, you need to be careful because you could lose the drone if you're above water, if you're above a very bad spot. So I highly recommend never, you know, find the drone past the 20% mark, which is what my rule is now. If the drone gets to 20%, that's it. It's coming back to me. I'm not, I'm not flying it any, anymore. Uh, I will change the battery and then I will go back in the air and fly it again. Um, so I, I, I have multiple batteries. I make sure that I'm always prepped and that they're always charged. Um, I honestly consider each battery to give you about 20 minutes of flight time and that's it. I, that's how I plan my shoots. That's how I plan every single time I fly. Um, so it, the battery does give you 30 minutes, but I highly recommend only flying for 20 or up until you get to 20%. So take that for what you will. Let's move on. How far can the drone fly? Well, as I said before, um, it has a limit to go up into the sky. Uh, the height is 150 meters. So it will let you go up to 150 meters and you can switch or you can change the uh, height that you allow the drone to go. I always keep it on full capacity just because I don't like to be restricted. Um, so I try to go as high as possible all the time, at least once during every shoot. Now, for distance wise, it depends. So if there is clear skies, there aren't any buildings or anything that will interfere with the signal to the drone from your phone, it'll give you a pretty decent uh, mile or two, potentially more, even three miles. However, it does start lagging after the second mile and it does, you are now pushing the limits on it. So I try to go about a mile or two and then I usually try to come back. I'm not trying to put, uh, if I want to go far, if I want to go even further, I would just drive there or get to that location and then go from there. But I normally tend to not push my limits on that because if the drone gets stuck in the air, it's game over. Um, I'm not going to get it back. It'll probably just do an emergency landing and I'm never going to find it again. again. Uh, so I try not to do that. Now, when you are around buildings, I give it a mile. A mile is as far as I would give it because there's interference, there is going to be lagging, there's, it's gonna not work for you properly sometimes. And usually if the camera starts lagging or if the drone starts lagging in my screen, I'm headed back. I'm not going any further. I'm not pushing any further. I have had panic attacks where the drone will even, you know, go further and further and further and it'll start lagging and I'll push the limits, but then I just won't be able to see the drone anymore. And I have to walk or run towards that area just to be able to find that signal again, uh, just to bring it back. So I highly recommend 
testing it out, but not pushing the limits on it because if you do push the limits on it, you'll probably never find the drone again. So uh, I would go about a mile or two usually, and then I'll probably pull it back. There's not really much to say about the photography aspect on this. Uh, it, it has a fantastic camera. Um, you get very high, de you know, high def photos. You can get them in RAW, you can get them in JPEG. I'll, obviously, as a professional, you're probably gonna be shooting in RAW. Um, so you'll definitely have that capability of getting the highest quality possible on, on a photo. Uh, you can also get wide angle shots, you can get 180 degree shots, and you can get spherical panoramic shots as well. So you have that capability. Uh, it, it definitely has very, very high capability when it comes to photography, and really it's a 10 out of 10. Same thing with the hyperlapse feature. There's not really much to say. It's a great feature that the drone has and it'll allow you to move the, ca the camera around and the drone around while you're getting the hyperlapse. So you're able to get some dynamic shots with it. Uh, highly recommend the hyperlapse. It's, it's fantastic. So should you just get the drone or should you get the kit, the fly more combo? Uh, I highly recommend getting the Fly More Combo. Yes, it's $400 more than the actual drone, or I think $300 more than the actual drone, but those $300 are definitely worth it. Batteries are expensive, wings are expensive, uh, and all the other things that come with it are pretty expensive just alone. So when you're getting everything in a package for $1,300, uh, I highly recommend just getting the Fly More combo. You get three batteries, you get extra, extra sets of wings, you also get um, ND filters and all that. So highly, highly recommend just getting the full combo versus just the drone because you're going to need more batteries and those batteries are like $100 each extra. Um, so you're getting a pretty decent deal when it comes to the combo itself. Uh, yeah, that's really it. I highly recommend just getting the combo if you are deciding to get this drone. So my final thoughts on this drone is that it's not only great for beginners, it's also great for experts and uh, people who are seasoned flyers. I highly recommend getting this drone if you want to learn on a you know basic drone, but I wouldn't really consider this a basic drone either. It's, it has so many features, it has so many things you can do, and it's very user friendly. So if you're a beginner, this is a great drone for you. Um, I honestly like it a little more than the minis, um, even though the new mini can shoot in vertical and horizontal, I don't care about that. Uh, I highly recommend it for any beginner or any expert. And it does take getting used to, it does take a while before you actually get into the swing of things, but you will eventually learn and it, it'll, it'll take some time to get there. But once, you, once you've given it some time and practice, after nine months for me, it's done a fantastic job. And yeah, highly recommend it, go get it. Uh, I'll have the link in the comments below um, or in the description below and you can see for yourself. But that's it for the review guys. If you like this review, if you like this video and if you wanna see more, if you wanna see some more features of the drone and want me to really go in depth with how each feature looks and how to use each feature, I can do so. So just comment below and let me know what your recommendations are. And if you ever wanna see any other tech reviews or if you wanna see other camera or photography equipment reviews, I'm happy to do so as well. Uh, I have a lot more videos coming your way, so stay tuned. Make sure to like, subscribe, all that YouTube stuff, and I'll see you next time.